This is Deductor continuing the Star Traders playthrough with the Bounty Hunter. In the previous episode, we completed most of the early game easy missions. And now we have some more complicated missions that um, involve traveling to neighboring quadrants. And critically, these will actually influence politics right now. So these uh, will be in support of this alliance and uh, in our faction, the Steel Song faction's favor against this trade ban, for instance. And because we have uh, missions in all sorts of different quadrants, if you click on this galactic map button, you'll see there are many, many quadrants in the galaxy. We're just seeing this one little quadrant here, and we have missions in all the neighboring ones. So it is uh, starting to get to a point where logistically we have to plan things out um, a lot more carefully. I'll do these missions go to the Brienne's Quarter real quick because the jump point to traveling to the next quadrant is uh, basically right here. I've already refueled my ship, I mean the orbit around the planet. Uh, and that's because I want to point out three buttons that I've ignored up until now. Um, these are basically jobs that you can do and they involve these card mini games. So for instance, you can choose to patrol around a planet and you'll see these five cards. If you click on this patrol button, it'll roll one of these five results. Patrolling is a friendly action and this is the primary way to build reputation. Uh, with a faction. We don't need more rep with our own Steel Song faction, but this is a great way to repair faction uh, reputation with factions that you've pissed off, for instance. Blockading is uh, another one of these uh, card games. You basically are a pirate and you try to hunt down a merchant ship, um, and if you get that, you can fight the merchant ship and loot their cargo if you're successful. Spying is a very interesting one. Uh, this one involves basically collecting intelligence that you can use to influence conflicts. We probably won't be doing very much spying with this character. Um, but it's kind of a neat profession where you can manipulate events behind the scenes. Uh, a certain type of contacts will purchase intelligence. For instance, I think that politician of ours, if I had any intel, uh, she would buy it. But the cards you draw are based on the risks and the reward pool. And the reward pool in particular will check for your captain's attributes. So for instance, patrolling checks for charisma, blockading checks for charisma, and apparently resilience. And only the captains. It doesn't check any other crew members. So uh, let's see. Spying also checks apparently wisdom and resilience. So that's why the attributes are so uh, important uh, for long-term potential. Stuff like tactics and navigation skill, you can increase on your ship, but there is pretty much no effective way to increase your attributes. There are certain items you equip and you could get lucky and roll some good traits or something like that, but there's not really a good way uh, to up these uh, attributes. In any event, I'm not going to do any of these uh, card uh, I'm not going to do any of these actions on this planet because uh, I don't get anything from them. But it's worth checking these out from now on when I go to new planets. I'll probably be checking these real quick just to see. Sometimes you get really lucky cards and you might as well uh, do a little patrolling or a little blockading. Their entire bills are dedicated around these reactions. And there are others. Like there's, if you land on a wild planet, you can explore. There's, um, I think, salvaging at an orbital station and so forth. And they all involve this type of card game. Uh, once we actually start doing these in earnest, uh, I'll probably point out more details about them. There are talents that you can use to help with each of these card games. I don't have any right now. Um, but there are very powerful talents. You want good talents before you really start doing these in earnest. Um, if this, uh, by the way, if this weren't not my home world uh, like my home faction this is another faction i will almost certainly do it the risks are all very low and the reward is very good i just don't need more rep with my own faction so let's start doing these other missions the plan was always to go to brienne's corridor first 
a pirate again. Boy, this place is infested with pirates, but it's our faction, so they like us. Might as well acknowledge them. All right, so traveling between um, quadrants involved this hyper warp jump at a jump point and you need to pass a navigation test. If you fail those, it can be really, really bad. Good thing I have a skill save talent at the ready and it does consume a lot of fuel and it takes a significant amount of time. And good thing my talent prevented the failure. You pretty much want to have a talent ready because failing those can be really bad. All right, we're now in another quadrant. This quadrant's apparently much less dangerous, which is good. Um, and are both our missions at the same planet? That's nice. All right, this is where I want to start checking the patrols. Mm. Finding a smuggler is actually good once we can fight, but I can't. Well, this is all bad, so that seems out. Death among crew. There are talents that allow you to avoid that. Uh, new contact introduction is really good, but obviously can't risk dying. So let's land. Oh, shortage at Alpha Orb. What is that? Four jumps away. Okay, I don't care. It's too far. So we do have two missions here. Let's uh, let's see. Secret message. Sure. So the great thing about these alliance missions is we actually gain rep with both our own faction and with the allied faction. Most of the time when you do these missions, you'll actually lose reputation with the other faction. But this is why I really like doing the alliance missions. It's a free reputation. Let's see. Um, escort negotiator. This is a low risk option. Or I could join the negotiation to make more money. Uh, but... I have no negotiate skill. But this is an alliance. I actually don't know what would happen if I picked this because normally you would just lose additional rep, but um, I don't know. I, I just want to do the low risk option. I don't see any reason to roll the dice here. All right, gain a little more rep. And our uh, politician is really starting to get influence. That's good. That's very good. This is a, what kind of plant? Luxury population plant. So these plants basically don't sell anything. Um, what else? Did I finish everything here? That was easy and way shorter than I thought. I think I have to bring you back. Let's take a look at the factional politics real quick. So the Valtos has a stronger position only by six points now. It was 23. If I turn this quest in, I might be able to make it so that my faction is going to win. Uh, we The fuel is super expensive here, but I mean, I have no choice. I have to refuel. I could heal two crew members who took a minor amount of damage, but not even worth the effort. Is there anything else I want to do in this sector? Not really. Hmm... If I knew this was a luxury population plant, I actually missed a chance to buy some goods and sell them here. So that was a slight mistake, but we have such low cargo owed uh, room that we probably would have only made like a thousand credits or something, hardly even anything. So let's go ahead and head back. Navigation skill save is ready. Ooh. We didn't need it as I thought. Now, do I need to turn you in right away? The answer is yes, because there's a person I'm escorting. And uh, I only have space for one person on my ship. Well, I'm impressed that we can pass these doctor tests. Oh no, Xenospores. There's Xenospores in this quadrant? This is horrifying. Entering orbit within this system may cause significant damage. Yep. Lurking spores make landing operations significantly more dangerous. 
Talents that prevent pilot test failures are not used when attempting to land on the system. The Xeno ships are more likely. Okay. So you're saying if I land, a Xeno ship may appear and just kill us. This is what I mean by you can just die in this game. Huh. What's the uh, state of my ship? Oh, if a Xeno ship appears, we just die. There's, there's nothing. There's nothing else to say. But this is so early for this to have happened. We lost some minor amount of morale. It's not a big deal. Uh. Yeah. I think I'm gonna take a risk here, land on this planet. And I'm not coming back to this planet for a long time. Until maybe it'll take like a year for this to go away. But yeah, that is so scary. I I mean, if I lose the game here, that's fine. But um, I just, I needed to turn in both of these quests. All right, I think now we are winning. Steel Song has a stronger position by three day points. Good enough, I am satisfied. What other missions do you have? I'm not taking any sort of missions that will bring me back here. There's one that allows me to deliver a person to Criticorum, where I'm going anyway. So I might as well pick that one up. Oh, hold on. Because I'm not coming back here for a while, I do want to recruit the Diplomat now. And I kind of want to buy this introduction. Uh, we have 200k credits, so it's more than enough to buy you. Because I, I'm not coming back to this planet for a while. Let's, uh, let's pick up this mission. Um, since I'm going to that planet anyway. And we don't need to carry any more people right now. Why oh, even cancel this mission? <laughs> so so scary to Xenospore. So okay, we'll do this one since I need to go to Criticorum anyway. I'm not taking any other missions. Well, I mean, I might as well roll on them to see what happens. Definitely not doing that. Definitely not doing these. Like, these require me to come back here. So, not doing anything that requires me to come back here. Well, this one doesn't actually require me to come back here. I'm delivering this person. I have to go to the fifth pass and then do two more jumps to deliver this person. It's not worth it. Not worth the effort. Yeah. So... Um, I'm going to go ahead and now pay my crew, refuel, don't really need to do anything else right now. All right, you need to up your engineering. Uh, your engineering is going up so slowly. The reason why I splash one point to military officers, pick this up, stiff salute. Um, You'll encounter your share of hostile opposing military officers and opposing zealots who won't even let you surrender. They'll just want to fight you. And this talent will allow you to uh, end that encounter with a draw and you don't have to fight them. I think this is incredibly good. Any sort of talent that gets you out of ship combat are very, very strong. And I think this is one of the best talents in the game. Uh, and you should pretty much always have one military officer if only for that one talent because a hostile uh, enemy ship can just end your run right away. So we definitely can't stay around in this on this planet. We have to go away. I don't think there's anything else I want to do here. Nope. Oh right, I want to hire a diplomat and purchase. Let's we'll just purchase this introduction. So now we have a new contact. This one's a high princess who can give us more missions, allow us to buy ranks and edicts and more introductions and so forth. Different contacts do different things. Um, 
All recruits gain plus one higher level wing vet. I don't think I need one of those. But it's good to have a lot of contacts. You can get uh, dozens upon dozens of contacts. Uh, I do want to hire a diplomat, so I'm going to fire someone. Uh, let's take a look at my ship. At this point, I don't think I need two of those gun deck bosses. I picked them up to get that talent that allows me to pass intimidate tests, but now I have uh, some intimidate on my ship. And if I fail one or two of those tests, it's not a big deal at this point. So let's get rid of you. Let's recruit a level six diplomat as a crew. Let's take a look at our new diplomat. High charisma, that's really good. Charisma is very important for a diplomat. So, how many, you have two talents, okay. Let's see, what are our options? Ah, we can see the rank five talent. One thing you'll know is that this character is level six, but the rank they have in Diplomat is only level five. And that's just because um, for crew members, their rank is um, lower than their level. Like all your officers and your captain, the level is always equal to the rank, the total ranks of their jobs, but crew members are just less effective. And that's why. Let's see, what are my options here? When completing something a mission, increase contact reputation and influence based on charisma percentage. That's pretty good. Uh, I have very high charisma. When paying your crew, increase morale. I don't care about that. Discount price for introductions. That doesn't save enough money. Ah, this is very important. Adept mediation. When completing something a mission using negotiate skill legally. Your careful mediation mitigates your reputation loss. Any sort of talent that me, uh, reduces reputation loss is very, very strong. So I'm going to pick that. I'm tempted to take one of these uh, abilities to pass a fail negotiate test, but there aren't usually too many of these. I almost feel like this one, when completing accepting a mission, increased contact reputation and influence is uh, like just more useful. Um, I don't really foresee me doing a lot of these negotiations, so I don't really think I need this. I could hire a second diplomat, but I, I don't really need two diplomats. I'm just going to take this. This actually seems more immediately useful. I'll be able to do lots of missions. I'll probably uh, eventually want to do bounty hunting missions. I don't think in those missions you're going to negotiate too much with your target. You're just not really, you can't talk them into surrendering. So we might as well profit from that, huh? All right, great. I'm not coming back to the system for two years. Xenos in this game is not like hard. You will just die at this point in the game when you fight them. In fact, unless you have very dedicated builds in the mid to late game, you will just die and that's it. There's no tactics or anything that you can do against them. Uh, you need the right type of build. So. This is not like Battle Brothers or uh, other strategy games where, oh, you just have to know the trick to fight the Xenos. No, it's a check on your crew and your ship. And the check is don't fight them. There are no tricks. The trick is you need a better ship and better crew. Uh, so, yeah. At least I'm possible difficulty. I don't know about the other difficulties. All right. Not coming back to this system for a while. Let's go back to Crypto Quorum, uh, deliver quests, and then pick up some more quests from. Actually, I might actually want to go to um, this planet, Mongrel, because it's kind of out of the way. And I might as well get that quest out of the way and then go back to my home planet. That seems to me to be, to make a lot of sense. And then we're going to jump to, not the fifth pass, but the Hyperion Abyss. Hmm. To do, to try to influence this trade ban. But also just go to Steel Song Prime real quick, but 
Don't I already have... Uh, I have two quests for the Fixer. I suppose I might be able to pick up another quest, but... There's also that princess who could give us more quests. Hmm. I feel like I have too many quests already, is the thing. Do any of these, um, these don't actually require me to go back to that fixer person. I don't even remember what sort of quests he had for me. I don't know, this plan is real close. I might as well go there and take a look, especially because there's a new contact. Um, I might need one more trade ban mission to decisively influence this in my faction's favor. So I think uh, plus is only four AUs away. Let's just go there, take a quick look. These are not, um, the four AUs take like a day to go, but landing surprisingly takes a long time. This is 285 turns if I click on the land button. Oh, okay, it didn't take that long, only 286. For some reason I thought that took longer, but all right, that's fine. Do I have any more easy missions? Yes, I have one to go to Lloyd, but I'm already carrying someone, unfortunately. All right, um, I already have a mission to carry someone. A little disappointing. Uh, I don't want your stuff. I can start purchasing specialist gear, but the really good stuff is later on. We have money, and I'm going to be spending the money soon enough. Uh, the really good stuff is at level 4. This thing is good, but uh, this is not bad either. I'm looking for... Uh, these are items that your captain and your officers can equip to enhance their abilities. So this is one of the few ways you can actually get more uh, stats, for instance, with Drew items. I really like this uh, Melias scale, but uh, Melias skin is also not bad. It's just like pretty much strictly worse. I mean, yeah, it has slightly more armor, but you lose that fortitude. Still, they're very, very comparable. I could just buy two of these, but might as well like wait and buy the better one. There is one item I want to buy real quick. This thing, it's only 54k. Uh, or not 54k, that would be crazy expensive. 5k, 5,000, that's nothing for us right now. Oh, wow, this item has a lot of quickness and initiative. I don't tend to buy the level 1 items, but a lot of these are so cheap. 4 2 strength, resilience. Like, so very cheap. I'm gonna buy this. Um, does this use up my reputation with him? Yeah, it does use a little bit, but I'll have plenty of rep. Two resilience, I don't care about that. This thing, the jack braces, is uh, not terrible. Um, I'm gonna buy one of these for good measure. Oh, reinforced exo. That's a lot of extra defenses. This is much better. And it's only 10k more. The... What else we got? I don't care about damage. Don't care about that. Sure, I'll buy one of these. 18k, we can afford it. All right, so now if you go to your crew, I'm gonna equip my captain with the um, Bexium bomb since stats actually matter on your captain. Eventually I'll replace this with an item that enhances your combat abilities. But for now, that was so cheap, like, why not? And I wanted to equip you with the uh, defensive gear, the plus 42 plus deflection gear. That's because um, I want to bring you into crew combat to gain experience and I worry you're going to die because you don't actually have any ability to do combat. So the idea is you're going to sit there and the other team members are going to carry you. We're not ready for crew combat by the way. Uh, I need to save up some more money uh, to buy an item that will or to upgrade my ship. Alright, let's see. What other trade ban missions do I have? Oh, this seems easy. Just deliver some stuff. Okay, maybe. 
don't really want to deliver people. I already have too many. Oh, okay. So here is a mission that requires us to survey the wilderness. So we have to explore a planet. Don't really have the ability to explore right now. Um, or rather, we can. Like, we can go there, but we don't have any talents to help with that. Um, and if you run into Xenos, you just, like, without talents to get rid of it, you will just die. So I don't want to risk that. All right, well, all these missions are pretty terrible. This is the only one that even seems remotely doable. Oh, you do have to explore as well. Okay, so all three involve exploring. I have no interest in doing any of these. Let's see what the other, uh, the high princess here can let us do. Generous wing vet. Okay, interesting. Um, discount to new ships. Ah, that's very interesting. Introductions. What do you got? A warden. Four AUs from here. Hey, that's great. Except for the fact that I know that's the planet with the Xenospore. I want to get into contact with a warden. Oh, wow. Quartermaster recruits. That's really nice. Like, I really want you, but I also will not go to that planet. So, smuggler recruit. Okay, you're a really good character. Uh, like, you have some good uh, good introductions. That I don't need right now, but I will. Bodyguard could be good, but let's wait for you to get more rep. Uh, I don't need trade permits. What kind of missions you got? Trade ban. Ah. This is starting to get complicated. We have to explore a planet to find a fugitive, and then we have to capture the fugitive and bring him back. Sounds a lot to me like bounty hunting. We're not ready to do this yet, but this is the type of mission I'll want to be doing just for role playing purposes. But we can't do this yet. First of all, you need a, a prison cell on your ship. I don't even have one of those. Second of all, you have to explore this planet and fight guards. I'm not ready to do any of that right now. What else we got? Brienne's Corridor. Uh, we have to do Research 3, Successful Exploration. Okay, they really want me to explore, apparently. Ah, this one is two jumps. Negotiator will do some negotiating. That seems easy, but I can't carry any more characters. Uh, we are to go to this planet to negotiate for the release of someone and then bring them back. Hmm, Hyperion Abyss. But don't I already have missions to bring people back from the Hyperion Abyss? Yeah. Okay, so I'm not gonna do any of these missions, but it was worth coming here just to check things out and to buy that specialist gear. I'm not gonna pay for any of the other stuff right now. Cool. All right, let's go to Mongro. I think at this point in the series, I'll probably uh, start cutting out some of the travel to boring planets. Um, like traveling to Mongro and traveling to Crit Corum. If I run into Pirate, I'm just going to surrender to them. So there's no real reason for me to record this very boring travel where there's no decisions to be made whatsoever. Um, Actually, that's not entirely true. I could buy some goods at this industrial plant and sell it here at the refinery. But I don't even really think that's worth it. Like, I can't make more than a couple thousand credits from doing that. And uh, these missions pay tens of thousands of credits. The couple thousand credits isn't even, like, it's not even worth my time doing. The independent mining planet, on the other hand, that's a different story. Huh. All right, well, I'm gonna cut the video or pause the video here as I deliver some cargo and then go back to Crit Corum. All right, I uh, handed off that package and I've re-arrived at Crit Corum here. I'm gonna land and see what sort of missions my prince has for me. Oh, wow, some of these missions are still available. Huh. I mean, some of these missions are, again, these are the really, really easy missions that I do want to do. This one in particular pays 55k, and there's a year's worth of expiration. That seems good. This one requires me to deliver a person to Z-Talk, but the pay is so bad. 
not even really worth my time. This one requires me to go to Steel Song Prime, which I'm okay doing. Um, do I have any missions that take me back there? Yeah. I don't actually think so, but that planet potentially will have more quests for us. So might as well do this. 41 weeks, that's plenty of time. And I'm going to accept this other quest. This is 50k, there's a year worth of time. We just have to go to 5th pass and bring a person back here. That seems super easy. All right, let's see what else you got for me. All right, now it's the complicated stuff. Um, I'm not going to mo roll more missions for you right now. Um, this one involves like negotiating on a Kadar Syndicate planet um, because I have plenty of missions. I don't need more missions. Uh, I'm not buying anyone who's 15 jumps away. Trade permits. Now I do want to start buying some ranks and trade permits. Let's see, what can we buy here? I'm going to the mining plant, so I want to buy stuff that sells at the mining plant. Gas processors sell. Advanced electronics sell. Gas processors probably sell the best. Let's, um, I'm definitely going to buy a rank 2. Should I buy the rank 3 permit? If you carry a permit, make a two or higher. Any merchants, diplomats, or smugglers will be plus one level. Ah, a little disappointing. I could have gotten one extra level on my diplomat recruit. Um, I don't think I'll actually make the 26k credits back just by selling gas processors. Um, let's see. Advanced electronics, 22 units. I mean, this will already fetch me a pretty good amount of money. I don't think I need to sell the gas processors. So let's uh, upgrade the military rank a little bit here. This will make it so that future missions pay us better. Also a rank, let's see, rank three higher military officer captains will ignore local quadrant reputation. I don't care about that. I really want five because you get higher ranks, I believe, when you recruit like soldiers and stuff. So let's uh, see how much I can push this. I might run out of rep, yep, I'm out of reputation with him. All right, well, we got rank three. We'll get more rep with you. Don't worry, you got plenty of missions for us. Um, I could buy an edict for bounty hunting, but I'm not quite ready to do that yet. All right, so. I like to get some trading done while doing other missions. At least with this particular type of build. So now we can sell off. Profits only one? That's terrible. 1.58. That's barely even worth the one turn it takes in the game to do that. Alright. Security checkpoint. Sure. That was easy. 13 AU. I think that's what we're going right. Now I want to do these quests to help with the trade ban. Um, there's an independent mining planet again, but we barely made any money from that trade. I don't see any point. Uh, you really need to trade between like better planets like you want to haul stuff from a high-tech industrial planet to a population planet for instance this type of trading from like a trade away to a mining planet is is just not very profitable all right um i don't think there's anything else i need to do i'll refuel at the next planet it's probably going to be super expensive but that's okay i also need a bit more credits Oh, I have some level ups. Alright, more combat medic. Good. More doctoring. Uh, 
plus ops. I could try to sneak in, but I have no ability to save uh, a stealth uh, roll, whereas I am very good at tactics and I'm apparently very wise. So this security checkpoint option seems pretty good to me. Um, yep, we have struck a blow against Clan Java and our action added plus five conflict score. Good. That's interesting. It didn't actually piss the other faction off. I guess if we're picking up uh, sneaky sneaky, like uh, picking up very stealthily this rogue, they don't know about it. So how can they get pissed off at something they don't know about? That actually makes sense. A lot of dialogue, uh, the text in this game is not just flavor text. There is, it means something. But I think next we have to go to the next quadrant here, Hyperion Abyss, which is also next door to this jump point. This seems like a good place to pause the video. Till next time, thank you for watching.